haven't you, haven't you got time to go to even one store with me before your appointment? I can't, honey. That dressmaker's so fussy. And look, I'm late now. Lady, what about this package? Please. Look, Blanche, I almost forgot. Tonight, how about you and Harry going to a movie with George and me? Oh, we'd love to. What are you going to see? Oh, you know, there are so many of them. I know. Excuse me, but who does it go to? <laughs> it goes to my sister Hazel. Tomorrow's her birthday. I, I'm not sure how old she is because she never tells the truth about her age. But whatever it is she says she is, I always say I'm seven years younger. <laughs> He doesn't have to know how old Hazel is. Just tell him where the package goes. Well, sure. That's all you have to know. Why should you ask me how old Hazel is? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I mean, it has to be addressed so her postman can deliver it. Her postman knows her address. <laughs> He's been delivering stuff to her for years. <laughs> In fact, at Christmas time, she baked him some cakes. And he knows her so well, he didn't eat them. <laughs> Look, honey, you take this package over there and I'll help you address it, huh? <laughs> uh, miss, uh, what? You don't have to know how old Hazel is. <laughs> Give me the package, Gracie, I'll address it. Oh, this bus is so silly. Oh, well, you dropped your pen. <laughs> No, 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 honey. You see, you have to properly address packages just like you do letters. Everybody... What's the matter with him? Uh, I don't know. Maybe the noise bothers him. Oh. Oh, here, mister. Uh, maybe this pen won't be so noisy. <laughs> uh, you're certainly having trouble writing your letter. And no wonder. Blanche, look at this. Look what he's trying to write on. Oh, you should get bigger stationery. Oh, honey, I, uh, uh, I'll meet you at the dressmaker. I'm late for my fitting now. Oh, all right. Bye. Bye, Blanche. <laughs> oh, there you are. <laughs> are you writing a letter to your mother? It's not a letter. It's an application for a money order. Oh, well, then you're certainly fortunate to have a mother you can apply to for money. <laughs> you and those boys your age are sending their mother money. I'm sending the money to my wife. <laughs> well, I hope she saves it the way you're working your poor mother to the bone earning money. You know, she won't last much longer. And then where will you get the money to send your wife? I don't know. And as far as I'm concerned, you and my wife can both go jump in the lake. Well, I don't know his wife, but I'm surprised she'd take money from such a disagreeable man. That man up there is certainly holding things up with all those packages. Well, he's got some nerve. Wouldn't you think a man with all those packages would get a post office of his own? So long, Charlie. See you later, Beasley. Oh, Mr. Beasley, hello. <laughs> hello, Mrs. Burns. Oh, am I glad to see you. So, this is your post office, huh? <laughs> this isn't exactly my post office. These other men sort of helped me run it. Oh? Well, they're certainly doing a poor job of helping you. In fact, I get rid of him. Look at him. He hasn't even got his uniform on. <laughs> I, I think he sent his pants to the cleaners. Uh, yeah. Oh. Thanks, Charlie. Well, I, uh, nice seeing you, Mrs. Burns. I, I think I'll be getting along. Oh, Mr. Beasley, wait. Come here. Look, Mr. Beasley, I... I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. It isn't your fault the place is run so badly. I guess the minute you go out to walk around, they take advantage of it and let everything slide. Yes, I, I guess you're right. Mm -hmm. well, goodbye, Mrs. Burns. Oh, uh, uh, will you do me a favor? Will you hold my place in line? I'll be right back. <laughs> Excuse me, please. Would you step back, please? Step back? Uh, oh, Mr. Beasley, he didn't send his pants to the cleaners. So why make excuses for him? Well, I... Oh, goodbye. Goodbye. 
Oh, boss, uh, what goes on here? <laughs> I'll explain later, Charlie. Goodbye, Mrs. Burns. Goodbye, Mr. Beasley. <laughs> No. Want this to go airmail? Yes, tomorrow's my sister Hazel's birthday. I see. A perishable? Oh, Hazel isn't that old. <laughs> no. No, I didn't mean that. Well, of course, she's older than she says she is, but she's still not old enough to be perishable. <laughs> I just want to know what's in the package. Oh, well, lamb chops. Six lamb chops. <laughs> lamb chops? Well, I didn't know where else to get her. And my mother's last letter gave me the idea. My mother wrote, no matter how old Hazel gets, she never changes. She's still crazy about anything wearing pants. <laughs> Gracie just came home from the post office, so if your mail is delayed for a few days, you'll know why. <laughs> she sent her sister Hazel a birthday present. I don't know why she doesn't send her the same thing every year. Hazel's always the same age. <laughs> Women never tell their right ages. I was at a dinner party the other night, and I was sitting next to this lady who told somebody at the table that she was 46. Then she turned back to me and she says, George, I hope you don't give me away. I know we went to school together. But the reason I tell everybody I'm 46 is that I don't want to be older than my mother. She tells everybody she's 47. <laughs> I know a fellow who told a little tiny lie. And to cover it up, he told a bigger one. And then a bigger one, and a bigger one, and a bigger one. Before he knew it, he was married. <laughs> then it started again. After his marriage, the lies got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and finally his wife got so sore she wouldn't divorce him. <laughs> I never tell any lies. My idol is George Washington. And that story about Washington telling the truth all his life is, is, is right. I happen to know because I used to dip chocolates for his wife. <laughs> I only met one man in my life who was completely honest. Jim Kennedy. I bought a new suit once. Things were kind of tough and I walked up and I said, Jim, it's brand new, how do you like it? He says, I don't, take it off. Another fellow walked up to him and says, Jim, can I borrow $25? He says, no, I don't trust you. Aside from being honest, Jim Kennedy was an ordinary man who lived a very quiet life. In fact, nobody spoke to him for about 30 years. George, Al Simon is on the phone. Oh, yeah, he's coming over tonight. We got some work to do. Well, you have to get out of it. I want you to take me to see from here to eternity. I'm not going to lie to him. <laughs> Hello, Al. I'm very sick. I can't work tonight. Goodbye. <laughs> it's the first lie I ever told in my life. <laughs> what I just said is the second. Oh, right. So it wasn't the best dinner I ever fixed. But I didn't have much time. Oh, well, don't get excited, Blanche. I'm not criticizing your culinary efforts. Well, good. I wouldn't dare to. Opening cans for 13 years has made you very muscular. <laughs> well, Blanche, that's supposed to be a joke. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm glad you told me. You see, that's one of the things that makes it so tough to live with you. Your jokes have no point. Well, think how much worse it would be if your can opener didn't have one. <laughs> you know something? If there's one thing I love, it's a man with a dry sense of humor. Too bad yours is all wet. <laughs> Touche. Look, Frenchie, if we're going to the movies with the Burnses, we better get started. All right, started, all right. Huh? There's one thing I want thoroughly understood all before right, I... All right, all right, You won't have to sit next to Gracie. Yeah, that's what you always say, and I always end up by sitting next to her. Like the last time we went to that Jane Russell picture. Gracie was talking to the man in front of her, and he got so mixed up, he called over the usher and said Jane Russell was disturbing him. Well, if you were a man, Jane Russell would disturb you, too. <laughs> Don't try to make me sound like a prude. I am far from being one. Oh, Harry, I was just kidding. You know something? I wouldn't be a bit surprised if you had a calendar in your office with a picture of Whistler's mother on it with her shawl off. <laughs> Where do you get these awful jokes? Have you been poking around in George Burns' incinerator? All ready to go? Yeah, let's step on it. We're gonna see from here to eternity. 
Oh, dear. Harry and I have seen that. Oh? Well, then we'll see knock on wood. Well, Gracie and I saw that. I thought you hadn't seen it. You remember with Danny Kay? Oh, she's wrong. Well, then you didn't see it? Uh, well, um, I, I think we saw it, but I'm sure I wasn't with Danny Kay. <laughs> well, let's look in the paper and show we can find a picture. Oh, sure. Here we can go, Chuck, huh? Hi. Hey, what about Rhapsody? We've seen it. Oh, here's something. What? A sale of the May Company. Oh, yeah, on men's things. Maybe I can get something for Harry. Mm, these shirts look pretty nice. Yeah, and those ties are very cheap. Mm -hmm. What about red garters? I'll get you a pair as soon as the store opens. <laughs> Stop being funny. Well, he, he's right, Blanche. You know, you never get up that early. No, no, honey. I I said that because I've seen red garters. Well, I've seen them, too. And doesn't a man look sloppy when they show? Gracie, that's a picture. But not a pretty picture. Yep. What about night people? We've seen that. Now, here's something I could get. A rubber mattress on sale for $35. Harry will love it. George had a wonderful time with one of those rubber mattresses. Well, what happened? Well, he got the hiccups and he could bounce them all night. That's true. Hey, here's something we haven't seen. Executive suite. Neither have we. Well, come on, let's go. Okay. Hi, everybody. Oh, hello, hi, Harry. Hey, what's going on? You on your way out? Yeah, we're going to see a movie. Well, Al Simon phoned me and said you were sick. I brought you over some stuff to read. No, I just said that I, I didn't want to work tonight. <laughs> well, wait oh. a minute. I'll go with you. I've nothing to do. Okay, come on. Let's hurry. We'll be late. What are we going to see? Executive suite. Oh, I saw that. Back. Let's get the papers. The papers, everybody. <laughs> We still haven't found a picture, but we will. When we get to the box office, it's going to be the same routine. Bonzel will say, let me pay, and Harry Morton will say, no, let me pay. And I'll say, no, let me pay, and they'll let me, and we'll go in. <laughs> and once we're inside, then we're in the lobby, in front of the candy counter, then Blanche will say to Gracie, how would you like your popcorn, buttered or plain? And Gracie will say, buttered, unless you'd rather have it plain. <laughs> After they've reached that decision, we won't have any trouble getting any seats, because the theater will be empty. Hey, how about Prince Valiant? Yeah, oh, sounds that's great. Oh, that's it. Okay. Uh, I'll go get the car. All right. Say, you girls ought to wear something. It's getting a little chilly out. Oh? Well, I'll go get my sweater, Gracie, and see you later, huh? All mm. right. Harry, do you think we like Prince Valiant? Oh, should be great. It's in Technicolor. The whole thing takes place in the time of King Arthur. You must remember King Arthur in your school days. Well, he never went to my school that I know of. <laughs> Class, though. No, Gracie, I'm, I'm going back a long time. This is the story of romance in the Middle Ages. Oh, well, that doesn't sound so good. You know, I think romance is more for young people. Although I'm not against older people having a little fun. <laughs> well, but Gracie... Oh, I... Harry, admit it. You know, it looks pretty silly for an old man to come home with the white hair on his lapel. <laughs> Gracie, I'm, I'm willing to admit but I was talking about King Arthur and his court and the round table. He would sit at the head of it and well, his Well, look, nice... Harry, uh, if the table was round, how did he know where the head of it was? <laughs> no, but when I, when, I, when I say head, I'm... I'm... Oh, we'll be out in a minute, George. We're waiting for the Mortons. Uh, about the... About the uh... Well, you'll see what I mean at the oh, movie. <laughs> good. You know, I like round tables better than square ones. When you bump into them, the corners aren't as sharp. <laughs> that's, that's true. Well, anyway, only the bravest knights could sit at this table. They were all famous for some gallant deed or tremendous feat. Oh, how many knights were there? About 50. My goodness. I don't see how they could get all those tremendous feet under one table. <laughs> Not, uh, when, when I say feet, I, I'm not foot feet. Come on, let's go. Harry's in the car. Blanche, we're going to see the most exciting picture. Yeah. It's about this middle-aged man named Arthur who has tremendous feet under the table and a white hair on his lapel. <laughs> That's what Harry told me. Anyway, you'll understand it when you see the movie. Mr. Von Zell, you ought to be ashamed of yourself mixing Gracie up like that. 
I didn't. I, I don't know how. Why, why, why don't I wait in the car with Harry? Come on, honey, let's go. Oh, come in. Well, you go on and I'll get rid of whoever it is. All right. Good evening, Gracie. Oh, hello, Mr. Simon. How's George? Oh, he's fine. He's on his way to see Prince Valiant. On the phone, he said he was sick. Oh, it must have been somebody else. It couldn't have been Prince Valiant. They didn't have any phones in those days. <laughs> huh? Oh, somebody must be playing a joke on you. Gracie, let me review this whole thing. I phoned George. He said he couldn't work tonight because he was sick. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. So I came over here and I said, how is he feeling? And I said, he's very sick upstairs in bed. Oh, that's the way it works. Yeah. So George is upstairs in bed. Yeah, and I was just going to phone his doctor. You mean he hasn't had a doctor? Oh, no. He got sick all by himself. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Ferguson. This is Mrs. Burns. Could you come over right away? George is very sick. Goodbye. Gracie, we're waiting for you. What's going on? Oh, Harry, no visitors. Visitors? Whatever George has got, you might get and give it to Blanche, so you better go. Might be contagious. You might have to be vaccinated. Yeah. Well, what about Prince Valiant? Well, if he's got to be vaccinated, they better do it on his feet. They're certainly big enough. <laughs> well, I think I'll go upstairs and see George and give him these cigars. Oh, no, no. You, you can't do that. He's very sick. He, he's got a fever. A very hot fever. He isn't smoking, then? Oh, no, his fever isn't that hot. Oh. <laughs> But uh, he has got a temperature on. Oh, yes. How high is it? Well, it, it uh, comes up to his forehead, so it's about 5'9". <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean, haven't you read the thermometer? No, I haven't gotten it yet. I haven't finished Not as a Stranger. <laughs> Very interesting book. Aren't you wondering about all that honking out there? No, it's probably an ambulance. Hospitals have been coming around all day trying to get out of this. <laughs> well, here, Gracie. Give them these cigars. All right. Look, Gracie, we're never going to get... Oh, hello, Al. George, I thought you were sick. Gracie, what's a man with a five-foot-nine temperature doing out of bed? Yeah, go to bed. He's wise. No, he isn't. He thinks Prince Valiant telephoned him. <laughs> okay, Al, you caught me. I didn't want to work tonight. I'd like to see a movie. Hmm, I thought so. Say, George. Oh, hello, Al. Hi, everybody. Simon. Look, uh, George, the picture will start in ten minutes. Yeah, well, we better go. Al, I'll see you tomorrow. Huh? Hey, wait a minute. I got the night off. I'll go with you. What are you going to see? <laughs> Back to the papers. <laughs> I'll phone my wife and have her meet us. What are we going to see? Prince Valiant. Great! I've been dying to see it. Oh, oh, I'll pick you up and we're going to see Prince Valiant. Well, anyway, you better wear a coat. It's pretty cool outside. Hey, folks! My wife's seen it. <laughs> You know, I'd like to call this whole thing off, but I'm sure there must be three or four more pictures we've all seen. They've been here so long that we had to fix them something to eat. And when we were finished, Fonzel says, let me do the dishes. Harry Morton says, no, 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 let me do the dishes. This time, I didn't even open my mouth. It's getting awful late. Do you think we'll ever find a picture none of us has seen? I doubt it. When we do find a picture, it'll be time to go to bed. That sounds wonderful. Time to go to bed. Let's see that. <laughs> You've seen it, huh? Yeah. Gracie! Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Yes? Gracie, this whole thing is ridiculous. All we wanted to do is to go to see a movie. Now we've got more people in the living room than they'll have in the theater. George, calm down. They'll find a picture. It'll be time to go to bed. Harry Martin suggested that, but they'd all seen it. <laughs> Yeah, well, I've seen it, too. 
I think we ought to call this off. Oh, George, sit down and relax. No, 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 I'm too nervous. Oh? Well, then I'll have to tell you what my grandmother used to tell my grandfather when he got nervous. Jim, take it easy. Remember, a rolling stone gathers no moss. How would that stop me from being nervous? Oh, I don't know. It didn't stop my grandfather either. <laughs> this is some evening. George, Gracie, we finally found a picture that nobody has seen. The man in the doorway. We haven't seen it either. Would you like to see it, Gracie? Well, I'd love to, unless you'd rather see Knock on Wood. Man in the doorway. Oh. Oh. Isn't it wonderful? Hey, what did I say? Dr. Ferguson. Hello, Doctor. Dr. Ferguson, what brings you here? Well, George, Gracie called and said you were sick. Oh, well, it's a little mistake. <laughs> Just send me the bill. Oh, that's all right. We're on our way to see a movie. Then go and see the one Ethel and I saw last night. It's a wonderful show. Well, we've already decided, haven't we? Well, yeah. don't miss this one. <laughs> it's about the captain who comes home from the sea and finds out that his wife has fallen in love with another man. And a few days later, the captain dies. It looks like murder. But at the end of the picture, you find out that what really happened was that he had taken a slow-acting poison so that his wife would be blamed. Well, we don't have to see that picture, do we? No. No. Uh, we're on our way to see the man in the doorway. Well, that's it. That's the one Ethel and I saw. <laughs> Back to the papers. On tonight's show were Rolf Sedan as Mr. Beasley, Lyle Talbot as Mr. Al Simon, Raymond Greenleaf as Dr. Ferguson, Bill Teed as the parcel post clerk, Jack Lomas as the man at the writing desk, Helen Mayen as the woman in line, Billy Griffiths as the man with the parcels, and Bill O'Brien as the man in line.